And I want to bring in Dr. Todd Eller now for more on these vaccine options. Uh, Dr. Eller, can you break down for us what we know right now about the Pfizer versus the Moderna vaccine? Yes, good morning, Diane. So um, there are definitely more similarities than differences. Um, uh, both of them are messenger RNA vaccines. Both of them require two doses, although with Pfizer's it's three weeks apart, with Moderna's it's four weeks apart. They both show really great effectiveness, um, close to 95% for both of them, effectiveness after the second dose. There is some evidence that there's maybe some effectiveness after the first dose for both vaccines, but those are small numbers. I think we have to be a little careful. I, I'd like to see more data on that over time. Um, and the good news is this high effectiveness that we've heard about is true over race, age, and gender. So those three subcategories. So really important, a broad range of people. Um, now remember, there are adverse events that come with any vaccine. And again, there's more similarities than differences between the two vaccines. Both have injected Injection site reactions that can be uh, pain at the injection site, very common, headache and fatigue. Those three things occur in most patients with both vaccines. And then the minority of patients can have chills, fevers, or aches. It looks like perhaps Moderna has a slightly um, greater amount of side effects than Pfizer's, but I don't even know that that's statistically significant. They're both in a very similar range. Um, remember, with both vaccines, you tend to have more side effects after the second dose than the first dose. And then when it comes to storage, I'm sorry, sorry, Diane. Uh, no, you, you can go ahead because the storage I know is, is part of the question and that's where some people are a little worried about the Pfizer vaccine because to a layman it sounds uh, complicated at least to be storing something at such a low temperature. You're absolutely right. That is a big difference between the two. Pfizer's requires a super freezer right now. It has to be stored at about minus 94 degrees Fahrenheit. That's roughly minus uh, 70 or 80 degrees Celsius. Whereas Moderna's has to be stored at around minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit. By the way, that's not a regular freezer that, that you and I would have. It's still, even the Moderna vaccine requires a, a, still a, a colder freezer. But you're right, it can be stored at, uh, at more normal temperatures. Um, once they're both taken out, of the freezer, they can be refrigerated. Um, Pfizer's for up to five days, Moderna's up to seven days, and then at room temperature, um, they both can be stored for about six hours. Um, one difference is that Moderna's does not need to be diluted, whereas Pfizer's need to, needs to be diluted within two hours of taking it out of the freezer. So definitely some differences with the cold chain storage. Yeah. We know that if you receive the one vaccine, so for all these healthcare workers now receiving the Pfizer vaccine, they will need to receive the Pfizer vaccine for the second dose. You can't combine the two. But if you're starting from scratch, assuming the Moderna vaccine does get approved, when it comes available, if both are available, how do you decide which one to get? Can we as patients decide which one we want or how does that get figured out? I think that remains unclear right now. For example, we're starting our vaccine campaign at our system tomorrow. Uh, we only have the Pfizer vaccine right now, but it, it's uh, it, it, in, at least in the initial stages, we, we are not going to be able to choose our vaccine. We are going to be offered a certain type of vaccine. Over time, that could change. We just don't know yet. And we heard Dr. Ja talking about kids saying, you know, we still need more data on that, so we're not going to be vaccinating children just yet. What are some of the other big questions that medical experts will be looking out for as this vaccine is administered more widely. Of course, there there's still many questions, and you're absolutely right. Uh, young children under the age of 16 were not studied in the trials. By the way, Pfizer's um, emergency use is for 16 and older. Moderna's is going to be for 18 and older. But also remember, not just young children, but pregnant women were not studied in either trial, and immunocompromised patients weren't studied in either trial. That doesn't mean that those are contraindications. Again, we want to weigh the risks and the benefits. As a provider, when I know that right now COVID COVID-19 is the number one killer in the United States. I really want these vulnerable populations to be vaccinated, even though we don't know the risk-benefit ratio. Other things, durability of the vaccine. How long does it last? We don't know yet. Uh, that remains to be seen. And another one is transmission. Will these vaccines reduce transmission? We just heard with the Moderna vaccine that there was asymptomatic patients after the first dose. There seemed to be less of those in the vaccine group versus the placebo. Again, 
again, those are smaller numbers. I want to caution, you know, I think we need more data, but hopefully these vaccines will also reduce transmission and really, you know, crush this virus over time. And you touched a bit on a question I got from a viewer on Twitter, which was how long before we know if the vaccines will prevent a person from spreading COVID-19 and if people can still spread it after being vaccinated, can we achieve herd immunity? So I definitely believe that we're going to achieve herd immunity if this is acceptable for, for the United States. Remember, we know that it's available, it's becoming accessible, and now we have to make sure that the majority of the U.S. finds it acceptable. If that happens, I do believe we'll have herd immunity. Remember, herd immunity is not one point in time. It's not a moment in time. There's, it's going to be gradual. And I believe that we'll start to see decreasing transmission, you know, I think in the spring, but that remains to be seen. Hopefully very soon, we'll see that the most vulnerable populations in the congregate care settings have decreased hospitalizations and deaths. I think that's the first signal that we'll see. All right, Dr. Todd Ellerin, always great to have you. Thank you. Take care, Diane. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.